It's poetry that explores uh, themes of personal encounters with health, mental health, um, and but through structured through my personal um, relationship with four different plants. So I've got comfrey, lavender, nettles, and wild garlic. Um, and so it's kind of a story. It's like a, a series of little stories that kind of imbricates together. Um, so without much. What's uh, the What's the object? Oh, sorry. So yeah, I've basically I've um, turned it into an artist book. Uh, so I've made some paper using comfrey um, and lavender and paper pulp um, and sort of printed onto it. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. And it's called How Do You Do Bobby Blue? Storytelling as Pollination. Um, and I'm dedicating this book to Alex Hackett who is a fellow artist and who has helped me grow in many different ways over the past year and who's not here today <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> she knows she knows <laughs> yeah. forward storytelling as pollination There is something to be said about the state of things. A journey is undertaken along the edge of extinction communal and requiring care. Pollinators savor the bitter nectar of devastation to fertilize, to fruit, to seed amidst the storm. To care for a pollinator is to respect coexistence. Is to care for a plant, is to care for a friend, is to care for self. And to care is to be affected by the other, to feel the compulsion to look after the other and to act upon that obligation. This is a compilation of love stories, for to sing of love is to reaffirm its truth. To sing of love is to foster the feeling, to fortify this kinship and the mesh of our interdependent existences. To pollinate is to set the seed of life. To tell a tale is to set the seed of care. Storytelling as pollination. Prologue, your life eight months after the storm. We sat on your floor in darkness as slivers of light squeezed through the black tarp taped to glass to play upon your checkered sheets. We draw breath and sighs and tools alike tarnish the trip trap of your floor. In the other room on her desk sit the seedlings silent and still, growing weedy and poisonous on your brain. I give them water now and then because I feel bad. They are too much to think about. To plant them, you'd have to clear the bindweed, but to clear the bindweed is to spend too long alone with a ghost. Chapter 1 the comfrey, the self, the body. First flowers appear late April, A's painted her toenails powdery pink and my eyes are drawn. Shining through sandal strands like pearls, spring sprung up upon us and we wandered through the low hills looking for comfrey, hill, comfrey leaves. It started with a seed, incepted in the brain which grew and grew and grew threefold that my pain and heaviness and stiff joints and I, my unsparing vulva could all find rest unlike what I was told. I'd read about women who had overcome the logic of domination only to be burnt at stake for entertaining better relations with the cosmos and within their legacy found a tincture for joints that creak and setting bone. Bone set, set back, knit back, knit bone, a healing herb grown in sweet soil unshorn and stout with leaves ovate and smelling like cucumber. It was important to pick the plant before, it was important to pick before the plant flowered and each leaf I bruised as little as I could and plucked and tucked into the drawstring bag, strung up 
leaf upon leaf, lines of comfrey to wreath the walls of a house in all, we had time to watch them shrivel. Some mornings the hips feel too sore, strung up, it starts in the lower back at the sacrum, where leg meets spine meets hip meets endless nerves, and down to the unwired toes, my littlest ones, numb and sensitive all at once. In oil they sit, my leaves, inchmule leech of green onto gold to make a thick sage slurry, potent enough to palliate. <laughs>